welcome to already the second episode of Gur Codes. In this episode, uh, a level 100 session again, although it might be come in handy if you already have some knowledge on how to build a Xamarin Forms application. Um, in this episode, we will look at custom renderers. Um, as you might know, when you have worked with Xamarin Forms before, uh, they have already implemented a lot of platform renderers already. This is the bit of magic that they use to transform uh, the abstract button or entry or whatever control you are defining in your XAML or code uh, to transform it to its native uh, counterpart. So if you look at this slide on the left, uh, you will see a button is defined in code and through the platform renderer that the awesome developers at Xamarin have developed for us, um, it will transform uh, the button, the C sharp button, into a Android uh, widget button uh, or a UI button in the case of iOS or just the system Windows button in the case of UWP. Uh, or maybe this is Windows Phone, I'm not sure on this one. Um, so that's how the magic works, uh, that's under the hood for Xamarin Forms. And of course, uh, you can hook into that yourself to create a more native look or access some more native properties. Um, so in this episode, we're going to look at how we to do that. First, let's start off with a new project. I'll just be using a blank forms app for this um, and let's call it Gur Codes Custom Renderer. Render -er. yeah. I'll be looking at Android and iOS uh, just like the last episode if you have been watching that one uh, my Android emulator or uh, Xamarin Android is still broken so I will only be showing you this on iOS um, but try out for yourself to do it on Android. Um, and I will still be using the portable class library and XAML for my layouts. Um, so let's just go with this. Uh, check the Git so I can add it to GitHub later on for you to see for yourself. And then it's going to load up a bit. So as we've seen last time, this is the default Xamarin Forms project layout. Uh, I don't need the getting started anymore. Um, so here's our PCL code. Here is where we would normally have all of our controls, or not even normally, we just have all our controls here. Um, in this case, the label, as we've seen last time as well. And let's transform this into an entry. And that's that. If we just run this, we will see the entry coming up for iOS. And we can enter text in it and it will look like a normal iOS entry. Um, so as you might expect from a solution like Xamarin Forms is um, that it implements only the most common denominator. So only the properties that are available on every platform uh, are available to you through Xamarin Forms because it wouldn't make any sense if uh, there is a property that is only available on Android um, to open it up and on the other platforms uh, it doesn't do anything so so that wouldn't make any sense so only the properties are implemented which are common between all the platforms okay and meanwhile here's our iOS app and you can work with this entry as you would expect uh, now we're going to see how to access uh, the native properties of this entry so as I've just shown you, uh, this entry is translated under the hood through the platform renderers, um, again, created by the people at Xamarin. Um, but we can replace that and fire off our own logic there. To do that, you have to go into the platform specific project. And what I like to do is add a new folder called custom renderers or whatever. And you can create a new clause in here new file, just a normal class, nothing specific here. And you can call it the entry renderer. 
and for this to work you need to over uh, sorry inherit from the uh, entry renderer it's already there so you can see my naming is very bad here so I need to do Xamarin forms oops platform iOS entry renderer um, and now we can start working with our own renderer so we override the on element changed which is the um, preferred way to do this in here the translation from the Xamarin forms control to the native control is done um, and in here you have a couple of uh, properties that you can work with the most important one is the control uh, this will hold the native control so we have to check if the control isn't null anymore so we can work with it and if it isn't then we can just access all the properties that are in the iOS native control here so for instance let's have a look at the background color which is a UI color and we can say okay is UI color dot uh, from whoops we need the static one not a new one let's create the using UI color from RGB let's give it a nice background color and also what we can do here is to say okay I want a different border for it so we can set the border style and we can set it to a line okay so now we've worked all of a sudden with some uh, I iOS uh, specific code uh, like the UI color and, and that kind of stuff uh, but we can also access the uh, forms element here which is contained in the element property uh, of course you can also check you should check if the element uh, is it null as well uh, but you could also uh, get properties from your Xamarin forms element like this and work with them here there's one more important thing we need to do to make the, all of this work uh, because now we have created our renderer and uh, it will do something on the element changed uh, but we need to let our app know that uh, there is a custom renderer in place which we want to use instead of the default one and we can do this by adorning the namespace with the assembly attribute and then say export renderer uh, which wants two types let's add this one it wants two types uh, the handler and the target I actually always get confused because with this, these ones um, because I never know whoops um, because handler sounds like the class that's going to handle this custom rendering right so but actually the handler here is the uh, the target that you want to apply this custom render to so I want to apply this to the entry and I want the entry to be rendered by our entry renderer again renderer. naming should have been done different because now it will get confused I want to use mine and that's it um, if we would now run the app again we will see that the app comes up and our entry should be right there with a nice background color um, okay nothing is coming up ah, I see I removed the base call here you should leave that in place so all the other elements uh, all the other properties are applied so let's just keep this here run it again and then we definitely should see our entry with a purplish background color and the border style is just a single thin line uh, if we would change this to I don't know a bezel what does that look like 
you will see it immediately taking effect on this entry. Okay, it looks a little bit different. So because you are overriding the platform renderer, uh, as it says in the name, it is for a specific platform. So if you want to uh, implement a similar look for uh, Android, you should go into your Droid project, uh, add a folder, although you don't have to, of course, uh, create a custom renderer folder, and also add a, a new file, um, which is the entry renderer again. And again, you would override, okay, I should have done the naming differently this time. <laughs> Let's just do that. Entry renderer, Android, that's better. And we have to override the entry renderer, which is default from Xamarin. And this should be consistent, of course. Or we could just leave it out altogether. And we can again override the on element changed and leave the base in place this time. And here we can check again. And you'll see that the control is now not a UI entry, but it's a entry edit entry uh, text, sorry, for, uh, for Android. So if we go into this, we check if it's not nil. And you can now specify all kinds of different properties, uh, like again, a background color, but also this will, be a bit different, um, which will be a, oh, we have to use the set background color actually, set background color, um, and get a color which is Android specific. Uh, Azure to be stay in the Microsoft terms. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't show you this, but don't hesitate to check out the code and check it out yourself. Um, and now, if there was a UWP project, you would have to implement it for this uh, platform as well. Or, of course, if you just want the control to look different on one platform or just access some. Um, properties of the native controls. You can do so for one platform and not do it for the other. The other platforms uh, aren't affected by it. So you can just implement it for one platform and not the other and just leave the default rendering in place. There's one thing I forgot here. I need to export the renderer for Android as well. Export renderer it type of entry type of entry render Android but there's one downside of doing it like this um, now we are rendering every entry so if I was to add another one here and I'd need to wrap it into a Stack layout, of course, stack layout, or no, you should use a grid actually, but I'm going to use it stack layout for now. And move this here. Oops, that's a bit much. And we don't need this. Okay, so now we have two entries. And let's do it like this. And when I run this, both entries will be affected by the custom renderer that we have just created. The iOS one, of course. Uh, but what if you want to have a custom control which looks like what you want? Uh, the solution is pretty obvious. Just create a new control in your shared project um, add let's do it in another folder 
controls, add new file, and let's call it my entry, which does nothing more than just inherit from the normal entry. And of course, if you'd like, you could add some properties here, which will be available to you from the custom renderer through the element property. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it at a custom, uh, at the, the, the default entry for now. And, and when we would now go into the renderer, we'd say, no, I'd like this to be the my entry. Uh, and then you probably, well, it's still an entry, so you can leave it like this. And now we just have to replace one here through the, I don't have the namespace yet. So let's add a new namespace. XML NS controls is CLR namespace codes uh, custom what did I call it custom render uh, dot controls that should be it now I should have the controls my entry and when we run it now it should just style my my entry and not every entry in my entire project and as you can see, only the my entry control is now styled and the normal entry is just left the way it is. And that is basically how you work with custom renderers. Um, there are a lot of other renderers available. Uh, if you just check the IntelliSense here, you can see there's an, uh, or better yet, let's look in here. Uh, you can see a box renderer, page renderer, button renderer. For, for each control, there should be a renderer. So you can work with anything and override any default behavior that you want uh, this way. So go ahead, have a play with it. And if you have anything cool to share, I'd love to see it. Um, and that's what I have today for you in this episode. I hope you liked it. I hope it was better than the last episode. And I'm continually going to improve I hope um, please subscribe to my channel or find me on my blog and hopefully you'll watch the next episode <laughs>